Hello and welcome to this episode. Today we're going to talk about suggestive thought. Um, earlier this week I had done a video for my other channel for, involving Tourette syndrome and Asperger's. For people that do not know, I have Tourette syndrome and I also have Asperger's. So I host a small channel that helps people, primarily parents of kids with learning disabilities, um, I can't even think, Tourette syndrome, Asperger's, kind of to help them understand what their kid may be going through and explain it in a way that's not clinical, but more just laid back. I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett. Um, he's the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. He, he's just, the way he talks is just pr pretty simple. You know, he doesn't try to talk to you like a doctor. He just tries to talk to you like a human being. I mean, he explains things the way he wants things explained to him. And that's kind of what I try to do here. You know, we can overdo it sometimes. But, so what I want to do is get back to what I was saying, and now I just get off my little thing. I want to talk about suggestive thought. One of the issues that people with depression and anxiety issues have is they are very prone to suggest the suggestive thought process. If somebody comes along and says they have a problem or a condi or a situation the person who's hearing this who has depression and anxiety has a strong tendency to relate to what they're saying and in many cases they start replicating what they've been told this is something that is very very common in sodomatic disorders sodomatic disorders are those things where your psychological mindset creates physical like symptoms one of the things that in the me cfs community we've seen and i'm going to pick on jennifer a little bit here when she went public on the that's the ted talk when she would do her Today Show, you know, Good Morning America, she would do this and she would do that. She did it in a wheelchair. She sat Indian style. When she started talking about the cervical issue with her, with her neck and spine, and she went out and she got the cerv cervical collar and started wearing it. So did other people. People that experience chronic pain have a tendency to trigger chronic pain in like-minded people. back to the Jennifer situation for so many people when they saw Jennifer using that wheelchair or I like as I like to put it wearing that wheelchair because she wore it almost like a fashion accessory and this is becoming a very common trend within the ME CFS community Many people are turning MECFS into a Martha Stewart type lifestyle of this condition. Constantly, we are seeing people who go on 
you know, Facebook groups and they say something and other people start replicating and doing what they're saying. You know, in the Tourette syndrome industry, this was a this is a problem we're dealing with. A lot of folks have they will see a Tourette syndrome video and they will start not mimicking what they see, but replicating what they're seeing. This is not true Tourette syndrome. This is suggestive thought resulting in a tick disorder. We as patients, whether we're struggling with a mental health issue or whether we are struggling with a physical issue that creates mental health challenges, and that's what I have always said about ME. It is a physical condition the same way MS, ALS, Parkinson's, or stroke is a physical condition. Something has happened that has physically damaged your central nervous system. I absolutely believe people with true ME, ME CFS have physically been injured. And I don't just believe this, I know this for a fact. But so many people with mental health issues are presenting with ME CFS like symptoms. People need to be extremely careful in how you're approaching your recovery, your day-to-day -day function, your day-to-day -day operations, as I like to call it. I have always said, Jennifer, I believe, because she had the flu, a very important part of all this. Whether you had a viral flu or a chemical flu. I had the chemical flu. Others had viral flus. They need to be extremely careful that they do not allow their physical condition to be superseded by the psychological challenges that are associated, that develop as a result of the condition. And many people have, I mean, their physical challenge, their physical issue, their mindset, I'm sorry, not mindset, their physical issue becomes dominated by the overwhelming psychological challenges that they're being confronted with. We have got to be so careful about how we listen to other people and what we're listening to. I believe all sides should be able to speak and I've always said that. I do not believe an idiot who's running his mouth should not be allowed to run their mouth. They should. But somebody who's not idiotic, who's trying to explain things in a way that's useful, just because they say what somebody doesn't want to hear does not mean that person should be shouted down, shut down, or banned and blocked, as has often been the case. You know, when we look at politics, you know, here in the States, it's either Republican or Democrat. Democrats want the Republicans to shut up or anybody that doesn't agree with them. Republicans want everybody to shut up who doesn't agree with them also. But to really come to a resolution that works and is beneficial, you need both sides to be able to explain their point of views so that the person hearing it can make an intelligent decision. You know, I, I see so many people who are Fox diehards who want nothing to do with CNN. And then you got people who are 
CNN diehards who want nothing to do with Fox. The truth is you should be listening to both arguments and then making an intelligent decision. But if you're only hearing one side of the story, you're getting what is called suggestive thought. And in many cases, you as the receiver of the information is not doing your own homework to validate what you're being told. We, as patients with this condition, have got to be so careful that what we're being told and shown is in fact useful and beneficial to us. And I can tell you, much of what's being said and done from my perspective as somebody that was fully paralyzed and is still partially paralyzed, I can tell you the approach to the MECFS community is exactly the opposite of what I did or would do. This is why my videos are so different than other MECFS videos. This is why you see me in a different way than you see other people. My approach has been much different. What you also may not realize, and I've stated before, I'm completely drug, drug free. 29 operations, all six of my joints have been replaced. I've had multiple revisions. Spinal fusions. Guillain-Barre syndrome. Actually, I have the variant of it called acute motor axon neuropathy, which is more common with people who have been exposed to certain types of chemicals than is actually being shared. And I survive without pain medication, without antidepressants, without antipsychotics, without, you know, vapes, without smoking, without alcohol, without prednisone. Well, I, actually, I enjoy prednisone when I have pneumonia, so they put me on prednisone quite a bit because my pneumonia isn't your normal pneumonia. It's chemical pneumonia. So the only way we can fight it is with prednisone, which is a steroid. But because it's so destructive to my heart, I can't stay on it indefinitely. I have to take it very, very short periods and then take it again months later. But when you're listening to me, you're listening to somebody whose brain, even though I have brain fog, is clear. You're not hearing from somebody who is withdrawing from drugs. You're not hearing from somebody who is just so anxiety based and they need their refill. You know, the fact that there's an Adderall shortage, I could care less. You know, the fact that there's all these other short shortages in the medical pharmaceutical right now, I really don't care. I mean, the only meds I take, I mean, they currently have me on methotrexate because I have a pretty serious problem going on. Um, and I have to take an injection once a week. But I take lisinopril for my heart. I take a prescription form of B, of D3, I guess it's called. I take a buterol, not a buterol, it's some for my kidneys. And I take aspirin every day, vitamin C every day, B12 every day. But that's what I take. I mean, I don't have a smorgasbord of 50 million pills. I don't have a special box designed that holds all my medications like was in the movie Unrest. You know, you ever noticed a lot of people who have mental health challenges have a tendency to you know, hover around this medication. Their whole life revolves around the pill box. 
I don't have a pillbox. When you're asking a question and somebody is enabling you by telling you what you want to hear rather than telling you the truth, they are harming you. That's one thing I've always been very, very sensitive to. But I also understand how destructive that can be. When you have somebody who's having a mental health crisis and other people with mental health issues are feeding that crisis and doing exactly the opposite of what you really need that's a dangerous point I'm a little lost right now I, I will admit I'm you know I have to pick my 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 fights I have to pick my moments um, like with a lot of people we have brain fog throughout the day it's usually pretty rough but at other times, I can be relatively clear like I am, have a reasonable conversation a lot of times. But behind the scenes, the truth be told, I walk around my workshop a lot just wandering, completely unable to, to complete any task because... I can't make the circuit complete. You know, a task is where you actually start something and complete it. You know, a perfect example would be if I was to go try to make dinner. I would wander around the kitchen trying to figure out what pot to use. You know, I would struggle to try to figure out how to get the box of pasta open and once I get the pasta open I would have a hard time trying to figure out whether the water goes in first or the pasta and then trying to figure out which lid is the right lid is another <laughs> so this is when you see me talking you, you may think I don't get it I can assure you I get it. But I understand things uniquely because of my background. But more importantly, because my brain is uncluttered with pharmaceuticals. I hope this video helps somebody out there who's in the situation. The last thing I ever want to see is somebody get hurt who could have been helped. You know, I'm not out here selling t-shirts. Who I am doesn't matter. You don't see my name everywhere. And there's a reason for that. I have nothing to gain by making these videos. My entire purpose is to help that person who is sitting in the doctor's office who's being truthful and is not being believed yet the only thing they've done wrong is they became sick until next time keep watching subscribe if you want throw me a comment People are always welcome. I never block content from people. If your comment is full of swears, I will ban it. But you can criticize me till the sun comes up. I do not care. Because I'm speaking from experience and, and from truth. And more importantly, I'm speaking with a clear mind. Till next time, stay safe. Do your own homework. Do not believe what everyone is telling you, especially this idiot who you're watching right now. Till next time, thank you.